silence. I hope this fast has been fun. It's yeah, been. Do I have to? Yes, because I came to you and I'm standing. I right hope this you. fast has been a lot of fun. I hope it's been an experience you tell children about, children you know, children you don't know. Any kid that you see on the street, you go, hey, hey, young child. I went to a fest in San Antonio and it was pretty spooky. I recommend it. I don't um, this is a long time in the making. I think we announced it last October, and now it is happening. That is how time progresses. It's been a lot of uh, stressful uh, amounts of time. Myself, my own, Louis Michel, who did probably 70 for the Senate. It used to be a vacation home. This is in New Jersey. So it used to be a vacation home for 
a lot of the celebrities in New York City and such, uh, there was a big lake in the center of the town and a lot of mansions and stuff set up around it. But by the time I was living there in the 90s, uh, all of that was over with, so we had a lot of abandoned places and like an abandoned amusement park was actually in the town and stuff. It was just a generally spooky place. And because of the, the lake being the center point of the town, the roads weren't set up in any logical way. They were very long without any side roads coming off of them. So a lot of trails existed cutting through the woods that went from how, uh, street to street. Being a teenager, I was 14 at the time, we would use these trails to meet up. Uh, that's where I would meet my friends. So I went to go meet my friend one day, and we were meeting on the trails as we do, when behind us we heard a noise. The limping gait of two guys coming up. And we turned, and it was the skinnies. This is the first time I had seen them, and I was terrified. They were a lot weirder than I had even imagined. They had, obviously they were skinny, but their arms were tan and like, they were like slim jeans. They were very wrinkly, <laughs> and they were very dirty, and raw, and like chewed up meat, and they were just spooky looking guys. And we ran and we hid behind a rock so that they wouldn't see us to wait for them to pass. So they passed, and we decided, why don't we uh, follow them? At a safe distance, of course. Let's we'll see where they live, right? No one knows anything about these guys in town, and we figured we would be the ones to discover it. We tell all our friends uh, that we did this thing. So we start walking down the trails behind them, and we're going further and further into the woods. Usually you just kind of cut through from one road to the other. We're kind of going along a side trail to end up on these old train tracks that were no longer in service. Again, the train used to run from New York City to here, and it no longer did. Uh, so the train tracks were all overgrown. We're following these two guys along these train tracks. And now we're about 30 minutes out from our, our uh, initial starting point. We're not by any of our houses anymore. I don't even know where we are. We come across an old tunnel. Big tunnel, two skinnies walk into it. We walk in behind them. Uh, again, we're at a safe distance. We're trying not to let them see us. Figuring it's not going to, you know, if, if we get too late for them to get to the other side, we'll be safe. So we, we're like maybe 25 feet, 30 feet behind them. We get into the middle of the tunnel, and all of a sudden, the both sides of it start looking like much further away than they did before. Almost like pill pinpricks. And the gate that we were following, that lopping gate, suddenly stopped. And the light disappeared. And I felt a hot breath on my neck. And I wasn't really concerned about what my friend was doing. I turned and fucking ran. <laughs> ran right all the way through that, all the way to the other side. Wait for my friend to come out, all out of breath, tired, terrified. He doesn't come out. I wait like two minutes, three minutes, figuring maybe he went to the other side. Whatever, I need to get the hell out of here before the skinnies come. I take off for home. He'll be fine. We're okay. The rest of the night progresses like normal. I go home, I clean up, we eat dinner. All of a sudden, we get a call from his parents. He's nowhere to be found. He never came home. They call the police. They send the police out to the tunnel. I told them where it was. They send the police out to the tunnel. They're searching the tunnel for this kid. There's no sign of the skinnies. There's no sign of him. There's no sign of anybody ever being in there. He just disappeared. And that was 25 years ago. He's still not found. Every time I return home to my hometown, visit my parents and such, I can't help but when I look out into the woods, I feel like I hear the sound of the skinnies coming back for me. 
and my plug runs cold, and I'm just waiting for the lights to go out. Now, 
You might be wondering what a bunch of mafia goons and all their birds were doing in this very room 50 years ago today. Well, that's because in the 70s, the Italians have recently got a foothold in San Antonio. They used to work out of a shoe store owned by a guy named Luigi Twinkletoes on account of the fact he used to be a ballet dancer until he ate too much gabagool. <laughs> and he couldn't, uh, he had to retire because he couldn't put on his uh, leotard anymore. It was a very sad day for Luigi Twinkletoes and it drove him to a life of crime. But needless to say, that is the reason why these mobsters were in this very room 50 years ago. See, Joey Bunch of Birds was Luigi Twinkletoes' number one enforcer. He had a fearsome army of crows, or maybe ravens, we'll never know, because again, I heard this from Louis, don't know no bird names, hey, come on, what you want from me, huh? <laughs> but all that matters is that what I'm about to tell you happened, again, in this very room. Everybody, in this very room, come on, help me out here. Jesus, I'm not the only one, I'm gonna go with a flashlight, that doesn't make me special. This make me better than you. So, there they were. It was Joey Bunch of Birds, an anti-Semitic Sal, uh, and who was a very problematic person, as you might guess on the count of his name, so I'll be censoring all of his dialogue. Uh, <laughs> I can talk about that. And also, as I said, Louis don't know no bird names. Sal, oh, sorry, Sal don't know no bird names. Uh, so those were the guys that were there that night. And finally, there was also Night Sky Nunzio, who never had a bad word to say about anybody, especially any racial and ethnic minorities. He was a very progressive mobster. <laughs> hey! What you guys want to do tonight? Joey Bunch of Birds said. Censored, anti-Semitic Sal said. <laughs> sure. Everything is George Soros' fault, no, nice guy Nuncio said. <laughs> it's called accountability, look it up. Censored, anti-Semitic Sal, <laughs> Sal replied. And he was sitting right where Danger Slater is right now. <laughs> There's no call for that kind of language, nice guy Nuncio said. It's dehumanizing. Ah, put a sock in it, Sal don't know no bird name says. We're mobsters. Yeah, but we don't have to be racist mobsters, nice guy Nuncio replied. Maybe we can just, you know, break people's legs without calling them all sorts of nasty names, you know? Like I dream of a world where we only break people's legs because they owe us money, not because they happen to be gay or black or whatever. Censored, anti-Semitic anti Sal said. No, the Israelis did not put me up to this, nice guy Nuncio said. I just, want us, I just want us to be better, that's all. Hey, I got a bunch of birds, Joey Bunch of Birds said, clapping his hands. And at that moment, that very moment, in this very room, 50 years ago, there was a murder! because all his crows or maybe ravens, whatever, who cares, started flying in through the windows. Hey, are those crows or ravens? I don't know no birds, Louis don't know no bird name said. <laughs> Censored, anti-Semitic cell said. <laughs> no, those are his birds, not the Rothschilds. Nice guy Nuncio said, pointing at Joey Bunch of Birds. That's right, Joey Bunch of Birds said. I gotta go, Florida wants me to watch the kids tonight. Okay, the other monster said, goodbye. Joey left. <laughs> Birds trailing behind him. Maybe there was crows. Maybe there was ravens again. We will never know. But all we know is that that happened in this very room. <laughs> and so then once again, anti-Semitic Cell had to open his big white tra big white trap and say, censored. So nice guy Nuncio, and remember he was sitting right where Danger Slate is now. So nice guy Nuncio pulls out an ice pick, and then he, and, and this is absolutely true, he stabs anti-Semitic cell right in the ear. And that's the story of how there was two murders on the same day in this very room 50 years ago. In this very room. <laughs>
He claims to be the spookiest of them all. Yet, he hasn't read yet. <laughs> Interesting. Andrew, Hilger, please. Woo! Woo! <clears throat> yeah, it's a hot one, bro. San Antonio is known for hauntings and goblins and ghosts. Just look it up on the internet. Hotels especially, but most especially, the Herman Sons Home Association building. <laughs> this one. Everyone knows that. It is said by literally fucking everyone that a doll stops this building. It's the doll of the Herman daughter. The Herman daughter was very angry with her father for not naming the building Herman Kids or Herman Sons and Daughters. So she cursed the doll. She cursed the doll her dad gave her on her fifth birthday. She grabbed the doll and forced open its eyes and then screamed right into its face things like, I hate my fucking dad! <laughs> you will hate my fucking dad too! You're gonna kill him! <laughs> the doll took this to heart. The Herman daughters threw the doll against the wall and for one moment, the doll questioned whether or not she was taking the right side on this issue. <laughs> but the bang was pretty hard and the doll's head emptied out pretty fast. <laughs> the doll was now a killing machine. And she called herself Death. The Herman father, whose name was Harry Wiener Herman, was enjoying his breakfast and reading the San Antonio Express News. Liberal pussy trash. He muttered as he ate his plain bagel, buttered with nothing but air, because that's how much this motherfucker sucks. <laughs> Harry Wiener Herman, who insisted on calling him by his full name every time, and I'm gonna do that from now on, out of respect for the very dead, <laughs> would not live to see the day Rupert Murdoch bought the San Antonio Express News. It's very sad. But the doll crawled up his chair and grabbed his tie and tugged on it until Harry Wiener Herman choked to death. There were a lot of witnesses. So one by one, the doll who called herself dead killed them all. It was bloodless because they all wore ties long enough to choke to death on. <laughs> <laughs> They were all dead. Very, very dead. All of the Herman sons. The one Herman dad. And the one Herman mom died a long time ago, unrelated. <laughs> when daughter Herman walked into the scene, she was shot. She fell to her knees. The dead dog crawled over to the daughter as if to ask, are you happy with my work? But daughter was not. She was distraught. She cried and cried and tried to gouge out the eyes of the doll called Death. She was successful in getting one eye out and the doll looked pretty dumb. <laughs> the doll crawled away and hid wherever she could. Daughter Herman went to everybody and screamed their names. Big Wiener Herman, Small Wiener Herman, Dick Bowles Herman, Harry Wiener Herman Jr., Todd, and finally, when she got to her fat ass dad's body, she yelled, Big Daddy Harry Wiener Herman! She sobbed on his chest, snot all over his last good shirt. She looked inside his pockets in case there was any escape money. <laughs> Nothing! But there was a note that said, To the guy in my company that names my buildings, please name my next building in San Antonio, Pussy Vagina Herman, after my daughter, after my beautiful daughter. This building was too ugly and too decrepit and haunted to bestow her name upon it. But there would be no new building because he was dead. Pussy Vagina Herman ate the note for some reason and then proceeded to gag herself with Harry Wiener Herman's tie. She died eight hours later. <laughs> the doll called death, she saw it all. Now she stalks these halls, looking for people who wear ties, just long enough to choke to death on, oh my fucking god, I'm fucking dying! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah! <laughs>